to actually step to those understandings. And frankly, the last step of that, on that rung of understanding, has been the fact of the Petrograd blatant exploitation by the National Party. Um, you know, there they are, in a coalition agreement with the Māori Party, looking at review of the wrong 2004 Act, while they've got Haryana, Peter and um, Tudor uh, uh, running around over here, they're actually subleasing those rights to foreign nationals through the Ministry of Economic Development. That's what's happened. But how do we deal with that? Hone, to his credit, has been raising these issues. You know, you talk about splits, we're not immune to split. We were trying to keep it out of the public eye. I was writing papers, so was Moana Jackson. We've got this hugely documented. To try and explain to Peter Sharples, who was very much a co-opted agent of the state on this issue, that this is a complete antithesis of Tinoranga Tiritanga. This is not what the coalition agreement um, contemplated, and that there should be a backing off of the relationship with the National Party, because the first exploitation that was um, occurring would be one not just to disenfranchise Māori, but our nation. And these kinds of issues were being ignored by him. Um, over Christmas, uh, I think you've raised a good question. Over Christmas, Hone took some really deep moments to think um, about where his future relationship. So his way of thinking, <coughs> given his broadcasting experience, is through the media. So remember when he got into trouble with his people? It's because he wrote a hell of an honest article. And it said three things. One is back off from the National Party, they're not doing it to us. This is not good for our people. The second thing is this increase in GST is not good for our people. We're starving, we're poor, our unemployment in the north is um, raging. There has to be a different way of doing it. And then the third issue, of course, is what I just described. Why are you selling our as nascent assets to transnational companies? That's essentially what he's saying. Now, those issues are not um, issues that there is in the coalition agreement with national. They are huge issues, and all Māori were sympathetic with them. Because he raised it, though, and I still say this, I can't prove it, I think John Key had a chat to Tūrero Flavel and um, Tāriana, and they then set about removing Hone because it was getting too close to the bone. The contest of ideas was becoming public, and it was then coming public by a member of this participatory framework within the crowd. Hone was to be painted as this black, loudmouthed, rash, um, radical, whose mother's Tetefai Harawera from the north, because we attack the messenger rather than what he's saying, which is, come on, public of New Zealand, not just the Māori public, but general public, is this what we want? Is this the contest of ideas for the 21st century? So he became the scapegoat for that challenge. Now, um, that whole process I became intimately involved with in a de facto way. Hone's um, lawyer, when he went to the Māori Party, is my partner at work, he's from Nelson, he's Jason. And Jason was telling me all this corruption that was going on. And he, and he said, I need, because that's been my role. When these corruption flow, the lawyers ring me up, so I start the protest on the outside. So you might see the first meeting, they're having a mediation. I know all your employment uh, workers would be mortified. I went with a protest outside the mediation, going, give Hornet a chance. John Peter Sharples is a sellout, you know. I did everything you're not meant to do at mediation, but, you know. That's what the lawyers told us to do, because they could see what was really going on in the outside. And we managed to get 40 people after a run around that day. They wouldn't tell us where the meeting was taking place. They, you know, they told us it was at one marae, and they said it was going to be at a hotel in town, and then we found it at another marae. But all this is systematic. And Hone, I think, to his credit, after reflection and leaving on the party, has now been quite systematic in the contest of ideas that now needs to be put to change them. And I think we have an opportunity. And it's for that reason alone that I've supported Mana. And I want to be really clear at this stage, my role in Mana is by no means likely at this stage to be confirmed as a participatory candidate. I may continue to do what I want on the outside. I want a movement for change that reaches to Pākehā communities, to Pacific Island communities, to Chinese Asian communities, but is led by Māori. I want that movement to 
been the fulcrum for a contest of ideas against Western capitalism and imperialism. And I want us to move back to a society that's based on the things you talk about here. I do want a living wage. I do want equality. I want people to have warmth. I want shelter for our people. I want our people to have really basic standards, but I also want our people not to be individual. You know that community stuff I talked about in Kaua? It's moulded me so much. It makes me think it is possible in this country to have it again. And it still exists in this country. It's in the heartland. I mean, I went to Tukuru a couple of weeks ago. There's a whole lot of, you know, 65% of youth unemployment down there. You have to work together to look after each other. Because the grandparents have got like 10 um, grandchildren staying in the house. So I've said to Huni that if we're going to do this movement, we need to reach out to <coughs> other groups. And do you know for Māori activists how hard that is for us? Because we get burned by Pākehās all the time. Pākehās we love. Pākehās who um, have fought with us for many, many years, and then when there's a contest of power, step all over us. You know, and I can give you some huge examples from the 80s, but I don't want to relive that time. So we've reached out to Pākehās who we can trust. John Minto is one of us. And I want to be really clear, in the 80s, John Minto never stood on us. He stood beside us. He was always with us when we got arrested and beaten up. He was always there when everybody else had left. You know, because the hard part of struggle is fighting the court systems afterwards and, and it's restoring your family. After you've had the blood rush to the head, you've been arrested and beaten up. John was there for years for our communities um, at Rotorua, because a lot of our people got arrested during the tour. He was there for us too when they privatised education. He came down and helped. Those people are hugely important to this nation, just as Māori are hugely important to this nation. So the challenge for me, and this is why I've agreed to work with Mana, is it's about bloody time we took the new right on. And we take them on with the contest of ideas, <coughs> with leadership, based on values of collectivism that we all promote. Now the hardest part is what Bernie finished on, and I, I have to agree with him, how do you trust? How do you trust each other? Because we've been working like little isolates, a lot of us, in our efforts for change. And Māori in particular, that has been a deliberate option. Not because we hate Pākehā, not because we uh, don't want to work with Pākehā, but because it's um, better for us to trust those that we know that have worked with us and that will be with us. So when we had the planning meeting around this, I was um, really happy when Hone suggested that we needed to reach out to have a leadership spectrum in this contest of ideas that is led by the philosophy of the treaty, which you quite rightly um, identified. It's about honouring that philosophy, and it's about challenging the status quo <coughs> and a whole notion of capitalist um, exploitation that's happening to us. How do we achieve that then? Well, um, Matt McCartan and Mike, I see you here. I've been really pleased with the way that they've given us strategy. But sometimes we're good on ideas, but poor on strategy. So it's been a very strategic development. One, Hone to lead the Māori Party, and in a very public way. And to challenge the leadership ideas and their outdated armness, and the fact that they have been co-opted, bought off, compromised and corrupted by um, John Key and his cronies. The second strategy has been for Hone to firstly launch the Mana Party with Pākehā and Pacific Island and Asian communities as an integral part of that. Why? Because if we are going to start to set the platform for change, then let's start from the beginning. For that to achieve any momentum though, Hone has to get a mandate. This is the mandate that's really been sought. It's not Hone going back to Tai Tokoro to say, can I be the leader of mana? It's Hone going back to our people and saying, we want to work with Pākehā, Pacific Islanders, and we want to work with Asian communities to promote the values of the treaty, to enable ourselves to ensure a better way of life for our children. 